I have here a Power BI report, and this word means something very specific in Power BI lingo. So in Power BI, you have three different kinds of content that you're typically viewing. You have reports, you have dashboards, and you have apps. So I'm going to go through what this content looks like in each and what the differences are as far as features and functionality so that you can see when you'd use one versus the other. So like I mentioned, this is a report. A report in Power BI is going to be the most detailed level of content that you're going to be looking at. And what you get with a report is you get, for one, a filter pane. So you can filter this entire page or all pages by specific things. So I can say filter the sales territory on Australia. You also have the option of using advanced filtering. So advanced filtering is going to let you filter on text containing a specific thing or an amount being over a certain threshold. And you've got different levels as far as the filtering goes. So this particular grouping here is filters on all pages. If I select one of my visuals on this page, I get another menu that is filters on this visual. And we also have cross filtering. So cross filtering is when you select something on a visual and it filters the rest of the content on the page. And that can be turned off on a per visual basis or on the whole report, but typically it's on by default. So expect to see that. So if I click on Jose, for instance, it filters all of these visuals by just his sales. If I click his name again, it removes the cross filtering. So I can do that and it goes back to normal. I also have a reset filter slicers and other data view changes button in the top right hand corner. So if I have done a bunch of changes to this and I want to undo everything, I would click this reset to default. And this reset button only works for you. You are not affecting anybody else's stuff when you reset. So don't worry about that. And I also have the ability in this top right corner here to add to favorites. So what this does is it puts it on my Power BI homepage. If you have a set of filters that you always apply. So say you are in the Australia sales territory and you always want this to be filtered on Australia. What you can do is set your filters up like so, and then save this as a personal bookmark. So this will save any of your changes that you've made, your filters, your slicers, your sorts, Anything you've done to this report page, it's going to save that in a personal bookmark and that will make it so that you can come back to it later and not have to reapply all of your filters and sorts and things. You can also make it your default view of your report if you want to. So now it'll show up in this menu here. So if I go to my personal bookmarks, all of my personal bookmarks will show up in this list and I can go in and update those, rename them, whatever I need to do. Let's go through the rest of the menu options here. So we've got the file menu in here is the option to download the file. If you don't have build permission on the data set, this won't work for you. So for example, I'm logged in with an account with only view access. If I try and click this, it says you can't do that yet. Um, we can also manage permissions. So in Power BI, you can share the level of access that you have, assuming that you have share permissions on the file which is checked by default. So most of the time, if you have permission to view something, you'll be able to share it. Honestly, if you're going to share, I just like using this share button right here because I feel like that's the most straightforward way to share access. And you have a couple options when you share. You can either make a link that anyone in your organization can view or you can share it with specific people. And you can also check whether or not you want them to be able to share when you share with them. So when you apply here, it's going to send them an email. And if they use Teams, it'll send them a Teams notification. So let's close this. All right, so the rest of the file menu, you have print this page. So printing will always work better for paginated reports, which is a different type of report that's designed for printing, but you can try and print any report if you want to. And you have some embed options. So you can embed Power BI reports in SharePoint. The website or portal is a premium functionality typically, so it's something that you embed in a, an actual web portal. So we're not going to go over that today. Um, in the export menu, we have Analyze in Excel, which is grayed out because it requires build permissions on the data set in order to use. And Analyze in Excel is not typically how people export to Excel. So if you're trying to export to Excel, don't use this option. What this does is it creates an Excel file and lets you make a pivot table out of things in the data model. So if you're not 
super familiar with the data model or if it hasn't been optimized for this sort of thing, you're going to have a hard time with this. So I'll show you where to actually export in a minute here. I can click to turn on drill down on the visual as a viewer. And when I do that, it leaves this highlighted. And then when I click on a bar in this visual, it's going to drill down into that bar. So if I click on 2022, obviously it's kind of hard to see this. Maybe if I pop it out, it's focus mode. So you can see that it's drilled down into 2022 and given me the same chart, but by month. So to get back, I can go to the drill up button to drill back up. And I'm in focus mode still, so I can close that by clicking back to report here. And then we're going to turn off drill up, drill down, and then use this go to next level in the hierarchy. So what this does is it drills everything down. So if we go in and look at it, it's got it by month and year. And you have another way to get to this. So you can also right click on a bar and click on drill down to go down. There's two different versions of this tooltip, by the way. So one of them, if you hover on this, should pop up the modern tooltip and I can click on drill down to drill down the same way without using these buttons up here. And here's what it looks like in a matrix down here. So the matrix is where you'll often see the expand all button being useful. So if I click on that, see how it just expands everything down the level. The other place you'll see this is on map visuals. So if I turn on drill down in this map visual and then click on one of these larger dots, I can zoom in. I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll on the zoom in down to the city level for that state. All right, back to the export to Excel, which I almost forgot about. So if we go to any of these visuals, a lot of people find it hard to find the export menu option for visuals. It's always in the ellipses menu for the visual, assuming it's not been disabled. So if you go there and then go to export data, you get some options. So if you're in a table, it's gonna give you the option to do summarized or current layout. Current layout is going to give you all the rows. There is a limit to this, so you'll see down here it says that it's 150,000 row max. You can go higher if you use the summarize data option, which will give you a live connection to 500,000 row max. The underlying data is something that's turned off on reports by default, so don't be surprised if it's been disabled. So this is going to let you export to Excel, basically. So I'm just going to export this so you can see what it looks like. So here's what that looks like. Uh, this was a matrix visual, so it's not going to have values for everything in the grouping. Um, tables will look more like a normal table. So for PowerPoints, you have an option of using the Excel add-in to live embed. However, I like to embed specific visuals, which is in a different menu, um, to do more of a storytelling sort of process where you have one visual at a time and you can tell a story around each one. So the embed for a specific visual is in the menu, the context menu for a visual. So if I go to this one and click on this ellipses menu and then go to share here, this is where it's got an open in PowerPoint. And what that does, is it gives me a little terms of use. I'm going to click accept. So this live embedded a specific visual. So now if I hover on these things, I actually get the hover context. And you also get a filter pane over here. So you can, in your PowerPoint presentation, filter on things. And that's pretty cool. So I can pick, say, our sales territory again. So let's close this. OK, back to our report. So you can also export to PDF. Interestingly, you can export the hidden report tabs, which I have not noticed before, but you can choose between all tabs or just the current page. I'm going to do the current page because I don't need. This takes a little while. We're going to come back to it. This chat and teams option will open up a dialogue to share a link to this report in a teams channel. So I can type in the name of a group, person, or channel, and it gives a little message about the report and then lets people open it or subscribe to it. Yeah, it looks like our PDF is done. Let's check that out. So here's our PDF. It's not interactive because PDFs aren't interactive, but it worked. It's back over here. I have this option to get insights. So this has been undergoing a lot of change in the last few years. I feel like it's actually kind of interesting now. 
So what it's doing is it's taking the highlights from these KPI cards here and giving us some information about those. So it's highlighting the largest sales territory and the color with the highest quantity sold. And apparently our orders are higher on Thursdays, which is cool. So try that out. Last but not least, we have an option to subscribe to this report. So the subscriptions are pretty cool. What I can do is create a subscription here. If I need to manage my existing subscriptions, I've got the option to do that here also. You'll notice it gives me a message that says you can't subscribe others because you're not the report owner, by which you can intuit that a report owner can subscribe other people to a report, which is cool. So we can name our subscription here. We can set the start date and end date for it. So we can set the repeat on this for after it refreshes, hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly and we can set the time we want it to send. These subscriptions are pretty cool. What they do is they embed a screenshot of what the report looked like at the time that the subscription ran, and then give you a link to click and to view more. They don't embed data in the email, um, but there are options to get subscriptions for, say, Excel files, PDFs, that kind of thing, that are available with paginated reports specifically. Another thing to call out here is that if you click on the report name, which is in the upper left corner, you get the date updated, which is the date and time that the report last refreshed, which is useful. Something else to point out is in this top left corner here, if you click on the report name, you can see the date that the report last updated, which is generally useful, and the contact. So your view selector is going to give you some options for how the page renders. So if you're, the report that you're looking at is bigger than a typical browser window, setting the fit to page is going to scale it down to fit your screen. If you do actual size, it's going to give you a scroll bar instead to scroll side to side or up and down according to whatever part isn't fitting in the box. And then the high contrast colors is an accessibility option. So if I change this to high contrast white, it flips it to black and white. And then this refresh button here, this is going to refresh just the visuals. It's not going to refresh the data set. So don't expect it to refresh the data set. And then we have a comment option here. So if you want to make a comment on the report, you can. So now let's go see what an app looks like. So I've got the same report open in an app over here somewhere. So this one. So this is the same report we were just looking at, but it is in an app. And an app in Power BI is a collection of reports in a workspace. So you've got all of the same normal options that you would have with reports. So you'll notice the toolbar is the same. You've got the same filter pane on the right. Everything else is pretty much the same. It's just the collection of reports is the app. And then we have a dashboard. And dashboards are not super frequently used in Power BI as such. Primarily because the one of the main benefits, in my opinion, of Power BI is using the cross filtering, the drill up, drill down, drill through, that kind of thing. And dashboards don't have any of that. So what happens when you click something in a dashboard is it opens up the report page that that visual is from. So if I click this, it just opens up the report page. So if I go back, you'll notice there's no filter pane on the right hand side. You do get hover tooltips, which is cool. And then these are just those cards that were embedded from the other page. So you'll notice they look a little bit different and they don't have the subtext on them. But you can embed full report pages on a dashboard. So that's what this is. And that'll let you maintain the cross filtering. But there's not, in my opinion, a lot of reasons why you would embed an entire page on a dashboard, because then why wouldn't you just visit the report? You know what I mean? The other thing you can do with dashboards is you can set alerts on specific things. So you can only set alerts on very specific visuals. So the visuals you can set alerts on are the gauge. So that's like the dial one. You can do it on the card and you can set an alert on the KPI visual, which I'm not using here. So the way that you do that is you hover on the thing that you want to set an alert on and then click this little context menu here, the ellipses, and then go to manage alerts. And in here you can create an alert rule on a specific thing. So you have to set an above or below threshold. You can't do equal to, and then you can set the frequency. So every 24 hours or once an hour at most. By default, this just goes into the alerts menu up here. So this one, if 
but you can have it send you an email too if you want to. All right, so one more thing about the dashboards while we're in here, there's the option to ask a question about your data. So this uses the Q&A functionality in Power BI. And this tries to do a little bit of machine learning. Um, my guess is that it's going to get a lot better very soon with Copilot. However, right now it's you have to have put a lot of effort into this to get something useful out of it. So what you can do is say, show me total sales last fiscal year. And you can, if you want to pin these things on dashboards, if you like Q&A but don't want to use dashboards, there's a visual for it in reports also. So I've got that in this one here on this tab. So this is the Q&A visual. It gives you some buttons for suggested questions about your data. Works kind of the same way. I can click one of these or type in something and it'll give me a visual. This one is nice because it lets you vote on whether or not it was good or bad. So hopefully they use that to improve the feature. But So before we finish up today, I am going to just go through the navigation in Power BI. So I'll resize my window so you can actually see it. Homepage, which you normally would start on. So we have our favorites and frequents here. So this is the one that I favorited earlier. It shows up in the top section and the icons for these are somewhat meaningful. So this one with a little bar chart looking thing means it's a report. The people looking icon is a workspace. So a workspace is a collection of reports and data sets and dashboards. And and this one that looks like little cubes is an app. And then at the bottom here, we have a list of all of the things that we have access to. So we have our recent, our favorites, and our apps, and we can sort and filter on anything in here. So the filter is over here. There's a checkbox filter drop down, and you can click on the column title to sort in here. So that's everything I have for you today. I hope this was useful and have a great day.